Hi everyone and welcome to our Smith College alumni webinar series. Uh, my name is Lindsay McGrath. I'm an events and communication specialist here at Smith College. Today is the last day of classes so there, there's a lot of hustle and bustle going on and I welcome um, any uh, students who are joining us today and wish you luck on um, your finals and your studying. Um, I am so excited to have everyone here today um, as we learn about uh, the alumni community and how to connect. Um, and before I introduce Nikki, I would like to go over a few housekeeping notes. Everyone um, who's joining today is muted just so that we keep background noise to a minimum. I encourage you though to join the conversation. Nikki's hoping for a really engaging conversation. Um, and we hope that you ask lots of questions by using the chat box. And if you wouldn't mind, there's, you can change the, the default is um, that you send to just panelists, which will go to us. Um, but if you select panelists and attendees, that'll allow others to see your good questions. Um, we are recording the webinar today and it'll soon be made available on the Smith College YouTube uh, channel. Uh, there's an alumni webinar playlist, so look for that, and, and if you can't stay for the whole thing, don't worry, because um, it will be posted very soon, um, within the next week. Um, and while I introduce Nikki, I'd love um, for everyone to kind of type in that chat box where they're joining us from in your class year. Um, so Nikki Bargava graduated from Smith in 2014 with an English major and an economics minor. While at Smith, she was house president of Cushing House, president of the Smith College cheerleading team, and very involved with campus life. After Smith, Nikki took a job at Morgan Stanley, but had the desire to go to law school. She attended New York Law School and entered the inaugural class of the two-year honors JD program, during which time she held numerous jobs and internships. After law school, Nikki worked at a boutique law firm in Manhattan, practicing entertainment and employment law for a number of years before joining ITV America, a large TV production company, as legal counsel earlier this year. So welcome, Nikki, and thank you so much um, for being here today um, and sharing your story with us. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you all for joining. I know it's tough in the middle of the workday, but I really appreciate it. And it's so exciting to be connected with all of you. Um, that was a very thorough introduction. I will repeat some of that. I did graduate in 2014. Um, and I, one of the things that has been so surprising and really exciting and why Lindsay and I sort of crafted this topic is because since graduating, really, um, my various career moves have very much had a thread of Smith College throughout. Um, and I'll go into what that what I mean by that, but it's been really rewarding to see our alumni network in the real world. And um, I am somebody who really enjoys connecting with young and older alumni. So uh, we thought this would be a really great way to sort of bring people together. So like Lindsay said, right after graduating, I started my career in investment banking. I joined Morgan Stanley. I always had the law school bug. Um, in fact, I took the LSAT and had my applications ready to go senior year, but when a job offer came through, I was like, why would I turn down money? So I took the job um, and it was great. I learned a lot, but that itch was still there and I wanted to pursue law school. So when I started applying, um, I noticed that at New York Law School, at the time, the Dean of Students was a Smithy. And this was my first out of college experience with an alumni. Um, and I emailed her and I said, you know, I'm applying to your school. I will be in Manhattan at this, on this date. Can I come meet you? And she was lovely. Her name is Deborah Archer. She's no longer at New York Law School, but she herself was a practicing civil rights attorney, um, went to Smith and was really lovely. She met with me on campus, introduced me to the admissions office and recommended me for the two-year honors program that I ultimately joined and graduated from. Um, and it was just a moment of real connection. You know, I, I didn't know her at all. At the time, I had really very few contacts in the legal world and very little experience. I mean, I had done internships while I was in college, but I hadn't done anything substantive. And she was so encouraging um, and a real catalyst for my application, so much so that I actually only ended up applying to that school. Um, 
And, you know, once I joined, I really sort of immersed myself in the law school. When I was there, uh, the dean of the law school, Dean Anthony Crowell, who's still there, connected me with who I thought was a student at the time, the president of the Smith College Club of New York City. Um, I, I thought she was a law student the whole time. So I went, you know, I set up a lunch with her over email and I showed up and was very surprised to see not a student, but rather a very esteemed attorney in Manhattan who was the president of the Smith College Club of New York City. Um, but she was so gracious and lovely and we had a great lunch. Um, and she connected me with her classmate who owned a law firm in Manhattan. Um, to make a longer story short, that's really how I got my foot in the door. I started working at that law firm right away. I made a connection um, with the owner. Revis Page Jump is the name of the law firm. Heidi Revis is a smithy as well. Um, and I worked with some incredible women for a number of years. And when I graduated, they were gracious enough to offer me a job and I worked in um, employment and entertainment law uh, with them for the last few years and only just recently moved over to ITV uh, where I work in in-house. I'm production legal here, but I do a number of things. I do corporate law for the company. Um, I work on production legal for different TV shows. Um, but that's really, that's really my journey since Smith and that's how the thread of Smith College has really pulled me through since graduating. I mean, by happenstance a little bit, but also because um, I think I'm somebody who's very proud of going to Smith, so I tend to make it known. So when Dean Crowell, who did not go to Smith, he went somewhere else, I actually don't even know, um, but he knew that I was a Smithy in his law school and he wanted to connect me with some other Smithies that he knew. And that's what I have found to be some of the most exciting things about being an alum is that everybody gets so excited and everybody really wants to make those connections. Um, it's just about how do we get to do that and how do we take advantage of those opportunities that may or may not be visibly apparent right away. Um, so that's sort of my journey. I wanted to touch a little bit on some of the things that have been really helpful to me. Um, since graduating, I mean, I'm, I'm a relatively recent alum and I'm seeing that there's a lot of recent alums. In fact, some of my classmates are here too, so I'm very excited. Um, so a couple of the things that are really scary when you graduate are going to a new place, not knowing anybody and leaving all your friends behind, or at least those were the things I was worried about. Um, and my first job when I joined Morgan Stanley was in Baltimore where I knew zero people. Um, you know, I grew up in New Jersey and then I went to school at Smith and I had no connections to Baltimore or Maryland. But when I arrived, I attended a couple of the Smith alumni events. Um, the Baltimore club is very vibrant, very active, smaller than now I'm in New York City. So it's just a different uh, environment. But that was really helpful because right away you find people who know something about you, they know something about your experience, and that commonality is really hard to find when you're just in a, in a new environment and not, don't really have any existing contacts. So that was really helpful to me, and I am so grateful for the Baltimore Club for taking me in. They had a very, very sweet tea party. I think the first week I moved there, um, I knew zero people, and it was just really nice. Uh, Ultimately, I left Baltimore, but I have really fond memories of that alumni group. Um, and I, I still see on Facebook and on other social media platforms too that they're very active. So kudos to them. Um, but that's something that, you know, and in my conversations with Lindsay too, we've been discussing because I think there's a lot of fear about alumni events. Um, probably not from the group that's here in this, in this webinar, which I'm so grateful for, but um, in general, I think it's really scary to go somewhere and not know people, but the alumni network is so great. They have great events um, and it is a little out of your comfort zone, but I think it's worth it ultimately because um, like I said, you can always ask what house did you live in and then there's a conversation right there. Even if it's someone from Green Street, someone from the quad, you still have um, something to talk about and something to hold on to, which is, which is so fun. Um, some of the other, other 
things that I've done to stay connected to Smith that I think have been really unique to truly to the younger generation, but also to people who are um, willing to make that first effort is to use social media. I mean, there's so many groups. I mean, I'm not personally, I'm not super active on Facebook, but I go on and I see the groups and people are engaging and they're having discussions and they're arranging meetups um, with or without the alumni clubs and the alumni association, which I think is great um, just to sort of have those moments of genuine interaction between um, fellow alums. So those are, those are some of my things. I see a question here. Why did I change from boutique to ITV and do I practice? So that's sort of specific to my career. Um, I made a change because, you know, and I have to talk about the firm I worked at for a little while. The woman, Heidi Revis, who owns my old law firm and my old employer, She's a Smithy who is very, very um, conscious about her Smith connection. And not everybody is like that, but Heidi is somebody who, when I arranged a meeting with her, when I was still, I, I had only been in law school for a couple of months. I don't even think I was done with my first semester yet, actually. And I did not go to her looking for a job. In fact, I went to her asking if law school was the right thing to do. Um, the only things I knew about her were that she went to Smith and that she went to law school. And I wanted to know how that journey had been. And then, you know, ultimately she owns her own firm. So I wanted to ask her about that. Um, and I remember I met her at the office pretty late at night because she's very busy, um, as, which is great that she made the time for me. And I was alone with her in the office and we talked for a couple of hours and we talked about our experiences at Smith. She asked me what did I want to do. And at the time I had only been in law school for a minute, so I had no idea. I, I actually thought I was going to do human rights law. And she said, you know, if you have time this summer, why don't you come and work here for a couple of weeks? And I did that. Uh, I, I ended up making a really good relationship with another one of the female partners there um, who I worked very closely with throughout my whole time there. But the thing that's unique about that, and I don't, I don't know that there's another place that exists like that, but the culture in a firm that's owned by a woman is just so unique and so amazing um, and so hard to find, but one that I really valued and cherished. And so I still have very, very fond feelings for um, that firm and for Heidi in particular, who is a very, very, um, distinguished alumni. She's done a lot in her career. Um, and I was really fortunate to be connected with her um, at a meeting that I genuinely thought was with another law student. So uh, it just goes to show that you never really know when something is going to work out. You know, I, I worked with Heidi for three weeks and I thought that was going to be it. Um, it turned out to be three and a half years of my career and very, very formative early years for me. So um, I'm very thankful for that. And that was because of the Smith College Club of New York City that was hosting meetings at my law school, so my dean knew about it, um, and that's how that got connected. So it's sort of a roundabout way of coming to me, but um, that's what I love most about our alumni community is how willing we are to sort of make those connections. And you know, I, I can speak from personal experience. I get emails from alumni often and sometimes they're just like, I don't know when I, I got an email this morning because someone couldn't join the, this webinar. And she said, you know, I don't really know what I wanna do, but I'm an English and economics major and maybe you'll have some ideas. So of course I'm gonna have a call with her and I, I'd love to talk her through some of the options she's thinking about or, you know, if I have any insight, I don't know that I do, but um, I find that it's one of those things that I'm always going to answer those emails. I'm always going to answer those phone calls. Um, and this is not somebody I knew when I was on campus. It's, it's a total stranger, but um, I'm of course going to be as helpful to her as I can be, um, knowing that ultimately maybe there isn't anything I can do, but just for her to have a sounding board is um, really valuable to me. So that's something I definitely um, regard as one of the best parts of Smith. So I see a question here, which I'm sure Lindsay will um, agree with me. My work brings me to several continents. How can I connect with 
smith clouds in africa southeast asia and south america so i know for a fact that there is a very very broad alumni base i mean as we all know smith college brings students from around the world and then our students go around the world after graduation um, i believe that there are probably clubs um, in each of these places, I, I, I encourage you to look on Facebook. We have an alumni directory that I know Lindsay will run through at the end um, as well. But I think it's really, um, if, you, if you're conscious about your search, you will find them. Um, the other thing too is I always, whenever I was interviewing for jobs or applying to law schools, I always look to see if there's a Smith person anywhere in those organizations. Um, only just to say, hey, I'm here, I exist, and so do you, and we have this thing in common. It's, you know, my outreach is really not about getting something or trying to insert myself in a way that's um, presumptuous or even just self-serving. It's really just to make that connection, and I think that's something that we all should be really intentional about um, and you know, that's something that we can all do, right? I, when I was in law school, I would send emails to Smithies and also not Smithies, but just in general, like, tell me about what you do. Can I take you for coffee? Um, because when you're trying to figure out either a career path or a career change, I think it's really important to um, give yourself as much information as possible. And even, you know, in my real life and actual everything, I try to inform myself as much as I can. So talking to people about their career path or career changes or something that you think you might be interested in but know nothing about, I'm always willing to have those conversations. I know many of my peers are also willing to have those conversations um, because it's all about flow of information, right? So we want to be transparent. We want to be helping each other. Those are things that are really valuable to us. Um, and really helpful when you are going through either a career change or just starting out in a new field or even just getting deeper into your own field and maybe trying to pivot or explore something new. I think it's invaluable to have um, real life experience from people and information that they can share with you. Um, so another question is what are good resources for those of us not in major cities with smaller and less active Smith clubs? So this is a great question actually because um, I am very fortunate that I'm in New York City where volume, just sheer volume makes it so that the club is quite active. The Alumni Association comes here. We have great events. I actually, I really love the events that New York City Club and Alumni Association both put on. Um, some of them are professional focused. Some of them are purely social. I've gone to a number of them and I think they're incredible. But not every state has a major city, not every major city has an active club, and not every town or city has those things available to you. So honestly, I would recommend we that you go to the Facebook group. There is a Smith College alumni Facebook group, and it's not, I don't know that it's run officially. Lindsay can probably jump in and correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. <laughs> there's two of them. And there's, there's two of them. That we call, I, I like to say there's an unofficial and an official one. There's one yeah. run by the, um, college that you know posts articles and things that you can't com you can't create a post on but there is a very active um un unofficial i guess it's run by alums so it's very official and it's amazing resource i would i would agree because people post questions a lot um i'll also touch on some other resources as yeah. well but i, I want to let nikki finish her thought because i think it's a really good one yeah, and the, the other thing too, unofficial, official, I'm not sure, but in general, I found that Facebook, LinkedIn, and honestly, even Instagram, which sounds trivial, but it's not, and I'll tell you why. Finding people that you either were at school with or even not, just Smithies in general, has been amazing. I mean, I see the most incredible conversations happening on those Facebook pages. I see people making connections. Honestly, I see people meeting up. Like they, they will form a little group based on some comment section and meet for coffee or get together at someone's house for tea, which is so Smith and I love it. Um, I have been reached out on Instagram via direct message by people who I did not know when I was on campus or who I didn't even overlap with who find me through someone's page, someone's page, someone's page, who tags me. 
um, hey, I'm moving to New York, what are some neighborhoods that I can live in? You know, I got that question last summer and that's such an easy question for me to answer and it's great and I made a new connection and we met up and she was so cute and it was just, it was perfect, right? She didn't know me, but she Instagram messaged me, which is a personal social media platform, but still one I think that's really great for making those connections because that's how you can find someone. Same thing with LinkedIn. I have people connecting with me all the time who maybe I didn't know, but I'm always appreciative when they send a message or I'll t when I'm on the other side, I send messages to people all the time. Um, and it's, it's really helpful and really great that we have these platforms and that people are really um, active on them. And I think we should all take advantage of um, the, the active groups that do exist, even if you are somewhere that maybe doesn't have such a large presence. Um, you know, people, people will find you. I have a Smith College bumper sticker on my car and my parents live in Princeton. And one day, a few years back, an older gentleman knocked on my car window as I was failing at parallel parking, but I was trying. And he said, my wife's a Smithy, class of, you know, 1971. What house did you live in? And it was so cute, but people get excited. You know, they see the Smith College sticker or the Smith College shirt and they get excited because I think that's what our community has built. Um, that's what we build for four years while we're on campus and what we continue to do once we leave. Um, so let's see, we have an awesome question from an English major slash creative writing emphasis, which is a less defined major in terms of career paths without having done internships or made contacts. I feel lost of what to do next. So that's a great question. Um, and one that I feel particularly connected to as a fellow English major. Um, I had the same struggle where I was like, what do I do with this? <laughs> you know, I love, I loved my classes. I loved the academic path I was on, but I really didn't know how was that going to be applicable. Um, I think the first question is, what do you enjoy doing? Um, for me, I thought for a long time that I was more business minded. Turns out I was correct. But when I was in school, I thought that that meant that I needed to go into publishing and that side of things. So as always, I was looking for information. So I found myself a publishing internship. Um, I worked at a literary agency and it turns out I did not like it. Um, I was fortunate enough that that same summer I was doing another internship at a human rights organization, which I enjoyed much more. But what I did learn from that experience was that I still loved the critical thinking that comes with doing deep research and analyzing that research. Um, but, and, and I still, was correct in my um, instinct that my business mind was sort of still still grinding. But, you know, that was really valuable for me because I had that internship experience that sort of debunked something that I was going to otherwise strongly pursue, which is to say a career in publishing. Um, I would say that if you're a little, you know, lost about where to turn, just start researching. Um, and that sounds, so trite, but I, I really mean it. I mean, think about the things you enjoy, whether it's research, which is something I always really enjoyed, was critical thinking, analyzing work, and then doing something with it. If that's something you enjoy, then I would encourage you to think about positions that would use those skills. And that can mean something like, you know, we can go into graduate school, and there's a lot of different avenues there. If that's something like working at a think tank, that's available to you as well. I mean, the thing I love about an English major and what I tell students, current students and, um, you know, students who are thinking about where to go, I love the English major because it's so versatile and I do believe that the skills you learn are transferable in many fields. I mean, as somebody who, I went from investment banking to boutique law firm work to now I'm working in-house and I genuinely see skills that I learned at school at play in all of those jobs you know investment banking seems like it's all number crunching but i'm telling you i did a lot of deep thinking about the work i was doing and those are skills i learned in the class in the english classroom um, those are skills i learned when doing research papers those are skills i learned when analyzing really obscure old texts um, and i use those same skills in law school and i use different skills when i'm out in the world working um, but i think 
giving yourself direction will come with sort of exploring different avenues that might be available to you. And they might not be so obvious. I mean, publishing is a very, I feel, in your face kind of thing that exists for English majors. But at the same time, you know, I also found a job in human rights at the same, in the same summer because the job description for that internship said critical reading, writing, and research skills required. And I was like, I have those because I've been trained to have those. So it may not seem obvious to you, but I encourage you to read it, descriptions of jobs. Um, just because a job title is one thing doesn't mean that you're not equipped to do it. Um, that's something that I think is really important to sort of really sit with and um, understand. But, you know, read the job descriptions and then see if you know anyone at the company, see if you know anybody who does that kind of work. It doesn't even have to be in the same company or the same environment, but if they do work that's tangential or sort of related, it can be really helpful to just speak to them. What is their daily experience like? You know, what kind of skills do they think they need for their job? When somebody asks me that question, it's a great moment of self-reflection because I'm like, huh, I just, I, you know, I come to work and I do my job, but what skills am I using on a day-to-day -day basis? That's really important for me as a professional to have the answer to. So when people ask me that question, I'm always willing to answer because, you know, it gives me a moment to pause and reflect also. Um, but yeah, job descriptions are great because sometimes there's buzzwords in there that are not immediately apparent just based on the job title itself. So that's, that's my main takeaway there. Um, okay, did you get your publishing internship through the Lazarus Center as an alum? And if not, where does alum look for internships? Unsure if the internships offered in Lazarus are available to alum. That's a great question. I actually don't know if the Lazarus Center does internships for alums. I know they do career services for alumni. Um, I myself was fortunate to find my internships by Google, <laughs> um, and that was true in law school as well. I, I did not use my law school's career center, but rather I found them through Google. Um, I know there was, uh, I'm forgetting the name now, but there is a website where like law students are directed to for job postings. Um, so I, I did a lot of that. I also was fortunate to find a bunch of it through connections that I made, some through Smith, some not through Smith. Um, but if I would encourage you to reach out to the Lazarus Center because I do know they have alumni career services and I'm sure that they have internship resources, if not full service internship um, connections that they can make. So I do encourage you to reach out in any case. Alumni. Um, okay, what is your best resume and cover letter advice? Get as many eyes on them as possible. Um, it's funny because we live in a time now where resumes don't need to be one page single space anymore. Um, people are really branching out uh, and branching their thoughts on what a resume looks like. I actually do volunteer work for Dress for Success, which is a big national organization. So I do resume and cover letter um, counseling with people and it's wild. We are so stuck with the one page, one single space format, which truthfully nobody cares about anymore. Um, I'd encourage you to update it with all of your relevant experience um, and have different versions for different jobs. This goes back to the other question where if you read a job description and there's something in there that you know you know how to do, find somewhere in your resume that you can highlight that. Um, that'll be really important. That's a really valuable skill to have um, to be able to tailor your, your experience to something that you're looking to do. Um, for cover letters, you know, I personally feel that the cover letter is something that people forget about, but it's so important because sometimes people won't open your resume, but they will open your email. Um, and I count an email as a cover letter. So I encourage you to, you know, get friends and family to look at it, reach out to people that you know in your networks to look at it. Um, I know the Lazarus Center does resume and cover letter um, counseling you know, people, people should look at it because sometimes when you're doing it yourself, you miss something. Um, sometimes you're stuck in a thought that frankly doesn't exist anymore. For example, the one page resume, um, at, least, at least in some industries. And I, I don't mean to overgeneralize because of course there are some industries that are still very formal um, and, and very not with 
the current um, climate, which is, I think, moving away from the one page resume. But, you know, you'll, you'll have to make that assessment for yourself. And I do encourage you to um, get as many people to look at it as possible. Um, even if it's just like your mom or your partner or your friend, uh, it's always helpful to have multiple eyes on it. Um, especially because since the times are changing, we, we might have outdated resumes and just not know it. Or, you know, there may be something that you're forgetting to include that you know you did, but it just slips your mind or um, you don't include it because you think it's not relevant. Um, sometimes the people who know you best can give input on those things and really um, give you valuable direction when you're trying to do that. The other thing I would say too for resumes and cover letters specifically, I have moved away from, and I, I just went through the job search earlier this year, so I'm, this is very fresh for me, but I moved away from the traditional format of, you know, you have your education, then you have your work experience, then you have your skills. And I sort of split it into, I have my education and then I have my relevant work experience and then I have my other stuff because I'm somebody, I mean, I've been working since I was 16 years old. Not all of my jobs are relevant for all the jobs I was applying to. And certainly not after I finished Smith and also after I finished graduate school. So what I did was I shuffled it around so that I had relevant work experience and then I had other stuff I did like when I worked at a preschool or, you know, worked at a store or whatever it was, because in my opinion, those things are still very important to me. I mean, I learned a lot in those experiences and I think it shows that I was somebody who's always been a hard worker. You know, there's a lot of benefits for including that stuff, but does it need to be at the top of my resume? No, not really. And like, I worked at a yoga studio when I was in law school. I don't need to put that in my resume at the top, but for example, if I'm working in a role where that requires me to speak to a lot of different kinds of people, I think something like that is relevant because when you're at a yoga studio, you're literally talking to anyone who walks through the door. And for example, in my current role, I speak to people who do not do what I do all day long. Um, I'm speaking to producers, I'm speaking to creatives, I'm speaking to PR people, insurance people. I mean, nobody does what I do because I'm the only legal person on the show. So um, I include that because it's very important to me to have that versatility. And it's important for me to show to a potential employer or employer that that's something that I'm comfortable doing. You know, I, I think that stuff tends to get buried because you think it's not important, but I think you can just reshuffle, especially with the daily or with the times, you know, we're not, we're not in a one page rut anymore. And that gives us a lot more freedom, but we have to take advantage of it. So I'd encourage all of you to relook at your resumes um, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, or whenever your job search is coming up. Um, look at them and sort of update, make them current, get to your two page, page and a half even. I mean, it's, it's sort of a whole new world out here and skills that were previously relevant aren't anymore. For example, I remember when you were searching for internships in college, it was important for me to put proficiency in different systems that I was proficient in. I don't do that anymore, but that's also because of the industry I'm in. Nobody needs to know whether or not I can do Excel because like, honestly, I can't. <laughs> but there was a time where it was on my resume and it was really important for me to keep that on there because when I was applying to investment banking jobs, I needed that. Um, stuff like that that I think we hold on to really tightly when we are in an academic environment or, or just not educated on what's current and what's happening these days in the job market, um, I think it's really important to relook at our resume. Talking about the cover letter again really quickly, I do think that it can be in the email, in the body of your initial email, and I think those are really important. I really believe that the first email you send to someone should be short, it should be to the point, it should be professional, but it should also be informative. Um, and the reason I say that is I've gotten emails from either people looking to work, do what I do, or even Smithies, or even just like random people that are so jumbled and confusing that I'm not sure what, what's the point. Like, why are you sending me this email and what is this attachment? Those are questions you never, ever, ever want somebody getting your mail to ask because you want it to be very 
snippy, you know? So I recommend sort of a three-part thing. Introduce who you are, and if there is a connection to the person you're emailing, put it at the headline, you know? I saw you went to Smith, so did I. Put that right in the beginning. Then a short paragraph, who you are and what you're looking for. And it, it shouldn't be what you're looking for for them. I think just in general, for example, I'm a law student looking to learn about the intellectual property industry, or uh, I'm a recent graduate who's exploring different career paths. That's good enough, but it gives me a little bit enough. It gives me enough about you to know where I need to direct my attention when I'm reviewing whatever it is you've sent me, whether it's a request to have coffee or um, other things. Okay, I'm seeing two questions. I wanna get to the second one first. Do I have advice on format, resume, CV, cover letter, bots, and programs? I actually, and this is a very personal opinion, I do not like those. Um, I think that those are created, again, for the old format that's not really applicable to a lot of industries anymore. So I don't really have any recommendations for those. My advice for format is to Google. I'm sure the Lazarus Center has updated their sample resumes and cover letters, which I used to print out at the library at Nielsen, bring to my dorm room and like copy them. And I'm sure they've updated them. So I would definitely redirect to the Lazarus Center and make sure that we're, that you're taking advantage of whatever resources they've put out there. Um, but I don't really know any bots that I would recommend because I mostly find that they jumble your stuff up and don't really do a great job of translating. So, sorry. Um, but I have another question. As an older ADA, 2020J, congratulations. I worry that the job market will not be as open to hiring me. What are your thoughts? Are there alums who might be able to help you with? Two part question. So my thoughts on this are, I think your concern is valid. Uh, I actually, I worked in employment law for a long time, so I understand that fear. Um, I also think that if you let that fear stop you, you will for sure be closing yourself off to opportunities that will not give your age a second thought. I think it depends a lot on what your goals are for yourself. I mean, be willing to do entry-level positions, be willing to do internships. And if that's available to you, if you're able to give yourself that opportunity, I think you're, it's the same thing. Your experience needs to come through on your resume and your cover letter. If you have a connection, find it and use it. If you're able to do multiple opportunities at once, whether it's one unpaid internship and then a part-time job somewhere else, do it. You know, whatever it takes to get your foot in the door, I think if you have the privilege and ability to do it, um, I highly encourage you to. I've worked for free so many times in my life. Uh, it's, and I, I'm really privileged to be able to do that, but it's because I was like working at a yoga studio on the side or working at the mall or doing something. Um, and yeah, I didn't sleep for a couple semesters, but I got really valuable internship experience. I don't think um, age is a barrier to those opportunities unless you let it or it's not the right fit. If that is a barrier, I don't think you wanna work there anyway. Um, I, I really cringe at people who say that's a young industry or you know, that's, that's, a, that's a youthful department. I don't like terminology like that because honestly, I know 20 year olds who can't do anything and I, I don't think that's a reflection on their age. I think they just aren't learning the job correctly. So I don't know why the reverse would be true also. Um, are there alums who might be willing to help you with this? Yes. Um, I think if my message has not been made clear, I will say it again. I have found that our alumni community is so vibrant, so willing to help, and so tuned into each other that if you make the first, if you make the first move and you reach out, I don't really, I can't predict a uh, situation in which somebody would not help you if they can. And help might look different, right? It might not mean just handing you a job or an internship. It might mean, hey, you know, you want to work in this industry. I work here, but I have a friend who works in your industry. Here's her email. Something like that. You don't get that from just anyone, right? Like you have to have a connection to get those contacts. And I think it's really valuable, but people forget, right? It's not, if somebody emails me today for a job in my company, Maybe I'll be able to help them, maybe not. The most I can probably do is pass them along to HR. But at the same time, I can say, you know, here are three people I know who work in the same industry. 
doing these other things. Here's their info. That might be really valuable. You know, you just, you just never know. You never know where, where connections come from. You never know where people are going to be able to reach out to you and, um, and make those connections for you that you might not even be thinking off, off the top of your head. So, um, I definitely encourage you, even as an older Ada, to reach out to the alumni network. Um, find people in your city, find people in your industry. Uh, and I, I would be very, very surprised if they weren't willing to at least have a coffee with you because as, as somebody who is not, I'm kind of in a niche industry and you know, I work in television production legal, which is pretty niche. I will have coffee with anyone. Um, and I, I find that many, many of my peers are willing to do the same. The other thing I wanted to talk to a uh, talk about, and I'm glad you made, you asked this question was this misconception. I think that alumni outreach only has to be done to like the CEOs of companies. We are very fortunate that at Smith, we have many alumni who are in positions of power, positions of leadership, C-level positions, um, you know, it runs the gamut, right? But we also have people who are younger alums who are doing jobs that are maybe not in leadership positions in their companies. I think there needs to be equal outreach across the whole, the whole range of alums. Um, you know, I'm only a few years out of school, but I love alumni outreach. I love when people reach out to me. I love reaching out to people. Um, I think a lot of times, particularly I found this with younger alumni, I, I find that they think, oh, okay, so the CEO of the company is a smithy. I, I, I'm going to email them and then they're going to have coffee with me and that's the end of that. That may or may not be true, right? But you should look under the CEO. Is there somebody else? Are there younger alumni at the company? If there are, let's email them. You know, let's, let's find out what the company culture is like. Let's find out how they got to this position. How did they get their foot in the door at this company? Um, I really, I really encourage you to take advantage of the alumni network across, across the decades, sort of, you know, we have the gold young alumni who are of the last decade or so, but then you also have the older ones and both, I think, give valuable contributions. Both can be really, really incredible resources, um, great connections, but I do think that there needs to be a real conscious effort at not being so focused on this person is a smithy who's the CEO of a company or this person is a smithy who is the politician and those are the only ones I can reach out to for job advice in this industry. I don't think that that's the case. Um, and I'd encourage you not to think that either because um, some less experienced or younger or newer alumni can be um, just as helpful and just as willing to make the time to connect with. Um, and I think that that can be really valuable also. Um, if there's any other questions, type them. The two official Smith sites you and Lindsay mentioned, could you please provide those web addresses? I think this might be Lindsay's time. A good time. Come on in. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. And, and thank you so much. That was um, quite an interesting career conversation. I love how things, um, can bubble up for folks. And I think that it is such an important point to, to talk about how strong this network is and to tap into it and, and to ask for those informational interviews. Or if you're moving to a new city, to, to find some uh, people who, who you have this common ground with because they, um, as Nikki has said, are, are really typically so willing to help. Um, so I wanted to show you guys a little bit about our online community. Um, and I'll also navigate to our clubs page so that you can see the vast network of clubs we have. We have over 100 active clubs. Um, I know there was a question about remote areas. We actually just had our first um, Smith reunion in Asia. Um, and it was in Pakistan. Um, and it was, I, I, there was, I think, 40 people signed up, um, and they came kind of from all over. So that was really cool. And there's things like that that are, are happening. And then if you don't have something in your area, you can always try um, to find folks through the directory. So I will go 
to that. So this is um, the home page. Let me go to our website. This is alumni.smith.edu. So this is the alumni relations homepage. At uh, the top here, you'll see that there's the alumni directory um, button. You can click on it. Oh, and I'm signed in as Nikki right now um, because I don't have access as I'm not an alum. Um, but I want to, I'm going to stay in it just, but after I'll, I'll sign out just so you can see what it looks like. There's um, a login and you can, if you've never signed into it before, you can find your username um, and you do this by putting in your senior house and your name. Um, and if you have signed in, but you can't remember your information, there is a forgot password um, link so you can get help. Um, but let me just show you around a little bit. This is the welcome page. Um, it has some resources here. You could get right to that club websites from here, class websites. Um, those are largely utilized for things like reunion time, but I know there's some very, very active classes that stay very connected in the in-between years. So that's another fun resource, library benefits, contacts. Um, you can contact Alumni Relations for any questions that you have regarding the community or events that are coming up. Uh, there's this uh, directory search, which I think is one of our, um, is a great tool for alumni to use. Um, I will say it's only as strong as the information we get. So we typically have really great location information um, and email information, contact information, um, less so for um, career stuff. That I would say I would also utilize LinkedIn's um, search. You can search um, using, some, you know, I would always include Smith College if you're trying to connect with an alum um, as one of your data points, but then you can search all sorts of different um, skill sets, titles, occupations, um, and you can find alumni who are doing things that you want to be doing, and then you can come back to this directory and get really, you know, great contact data, and, and that might be something, a way to, to get a personal email through that might not get seen um, on LinkedIn as a message. But you are able to search by location, academic information from Smith, um, employment information. And I would suggest starting broad, but um, say you just moved to New York. I was doing this earlier and it was funny because I, put, I automatically put a space after New York and I was talking to um, my colleague who who is the expert in all of this and we couldn't figure out why i was getting no resp no responses because i wanted to look up alums who lived in say king house right we always say the house network is so strong at smith that if you're nervous about connecting with someone it's such an easy way to say um to start a conversation you know i i can't tell you how many times i go to a smith event and and that's the um starting point for a really great conversation but um i had put it in and i got no results for king house and i thought that that cannot be but you have to be careful with the spaces at the end but you'll hit search and you'll get all of these folks that come up um, 68 entries and that's for New York but I know we talked about kind of it came up in the comments um, about remote places so this is a great place to to look so if you're um, in a remote area and there's not an active club you might want to put in the city you might um, or the state and just see who's you know who's around you um, so this is a great um, this is a great resource to utilize I want to make sure I'm looking at the chat box too. So my menu is hard to come up. Um, I will also go to the club network page. So again, alumni.smith.edu is a great play, a great starting point. Um, clubs and groups. 
and then you can find Smith Clubs in the United States and Canada, Europe, Asia, Middle East. So we have a vibrant network. Some are more active than others, but the, this goes to show that Smithies are everywhere in the world. Um, and so I, I would encourage you to take a look at these resources and connect with alums in your area. There we go, chat. Where does it go? Okay. I wanna make sure if there's any more questions that come in um, that we're covering them. The other things that I know Nikki had touched upon was Facebook groups and I can't, or social media in general. I can't um, reiterate this en enough. I'm, um, I've seen so many great connections made, um, career questions that through LinkedIn, through Facebook, um, through special interest groups on Facebook. There's like Smithy Parents, I think probably is for a new parent. I'm a, about to be a mom of two, mm -hmm. but it's incredible um, how people are able to make that connection and, and build their community through those um, resources and ask questions um, that are really relevant to them and they're getting seen and they're getting attention from other alums. And I would reiterate that, that alumni love um, to help each other. So um, the Facebook groups, we don't have those listed on, um, on our website, but you can find them through, um, let's see, you can find them through going through whatever platform it is. Um, this on LinkedIn, I just want to show you that the group, so you look for the group um, and there's conversations um, all the time. People are reaching out or they're sharing opportunities that might pop up. Um, so you can see that all here. And I want to see, I'll go back, stop share and let Nikki uh, back into the center. Um, and Laura, I see that you asked for those links. So I'm going to um, include those in the follow-up email. I will include the link for the directory and I will include the link for um, all of the different clubs. Um, and then uh, I hope that that is helpful for everyone. And if everyone, anyone has a question, feel free to jump in. Um, okay, wonderful. And there'll be an email that'll be sent to everybody. So you can um, stay tuned for that um, follow-up email tomorrow. I know we've had a few career questions come in. Um, Am I still on the camera? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, let's see, I can grab a couple of these questions here. Um, and I, I just want to touch on um, this. Uh, there was a question that came in about, is this where I ask questions? I'm new to Zoom. I hope this question went through. And it did. So that is where you ask questions. Yes. Um, let's see. I see, how rushed should I feel to investigate internships and potential jobs? first year should I already be getting my foot in the door and getting experience so that's a funny question because there's no should I think if you're feeling like you want to explore something or have an experience in a particular field industry whatever it may be um, pursue it there is no bar against being young or inexperienced for the most part some internships I feel like I should warn you do require you to have more than one year of schooling under your belt. I remember getting confronted with that, but um, still reach out. You never know. They might, they might be looking for something else, an administrative assistant in the office or something like that. And it might still be a great way to get some kind of experience in um, an industry that you're curious about. So I do encourage you to just go for it. Um, no matter what, what year you are, or what age you um, or what experience level you have or whatever it is. Um, let's see, mid-level career person who's in transition to focus on next move. 
again, find people who are doing what you want to be doing. Um, I always got the advice that if you look up in a company that you're in or an organization that you, you're in, you should want to emulate the people above you. So same thing goes for sideways moves. If you're looking to make a transition, find people who are doing something that you think you're interested in um, and reach out to them, make that connection, find out what their experience has been and go from there. You never know, you never know, you never know what an experience could lead to, what a connection could lead to um, and how that might serve you. So transitions are great. I myself did one, you know, pivoting from investment banking, which is a very structured way. The way they hire these young analysts is like, you know exactly where you're going to be for the next two, three years. Um, but I think it's really important to talk to people who are doing something that you think you might like to do. Um, so I'd encourage you to use our alumni network and the resources that Lindsay just mentioned to sort of dig your way through and find a connection or two and, and see where that takes you because I, I'm sure you'll be happily surprised. Um, let's see. Oh, I see one. If do you have any advice for a job seeker who was fired or let go as a result of mismatch on culture, are there any resources from Smith or a group that can support this transition? So in general, I think we're all supportive of your transition. Um, sorry to hear that, but same advice as before. You know, if you if you are in an industry that you want to continue working in, if you're doing a job that you enjoy, um, I think it's worth reaching out to people who are in the industry still or still doing a job that you would like to do in the future. Um, update your resume, update your cover letter, um, make sure that your latest experience is reflected accurately. Um, and go forth, you know, sometimes it happens. A mismatch on culture is very, I, I, I like that phrasing because that happens. It could be the right job, but not the right fit. And that happens and it's okay, but you know, it's important to take that experience for what it is and, and sit with it, but also move forward from it. Um, so I wish you luck and I hope that uh, some of what I've said today has been helpful to you and that you'll find something that's a great fit in the future. Um, and I think that's all the questions. Um, oh, I see a couple of thank yous. Thank you all for joining. This is so exciting. I'm, I'm grateful for Lindsay for organizing it too, but seeing how many people joined was just really exciting. And I'm, I'm so thankful for all of your time. Um, I appreciate it. No problem if you gotta go, I, I gotta go too. Um, but please, please reach out to me. I'm very searchable on the internet, on social medias, um, you know, LinkedIn, email, whatever you like. I'm available and happy to connect with all of you. So um, good luck and thank you. And Lindsay, if you have to wrap up, I will leave it to you, but thank you all very much. Yeah, thank you all so much for being here. I wanna definitely give a big shout out and a thank you to Nikki, because I approached Nikki thinking this would be um, a useful uh, webinar thinking, I always hear uh, when we're out on the road from alumni that they're intimidated sometimes by the network or um, not sure how to really jump in and use it to its best ability. And I know that Nikki's really um, done that throughout um, her time after Smith. So I was super excited that she was willing to do this for us. And I'm glad that we got to talk about some of the resources um, for folks out there. Uh, and definitely reach out to us um, at the alumni office if you have any questions about those resources. Um, I did see a question come in, where's the Smith College YouTube and where can I find this? So um, if you go to YouTube, you can type in Smith College, there's an official um, channel and uh, there's different playlists and there's an alumni webinar series playlist. So I will be sharing that with my colleague who runs that channel today and hopefully it will be posted by early next week. So stay tuned for that. And um, I'll share the link in that follow-up email as well. So thank you all very much. And, and thanks again to Nikki. And, and have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.